I'm Daniel Song. I'm Jesse Zhang. And I'm going to Harvard University. And I'll be applying for college this year. And some ways we actually help ourselves in the college process, some ways are... Okay. Oh, we took a lot of AP classes. Um, SAT, um, practice books, um, practice at home before you, you go for exams. Um, possibly thinking about taking the ACT and um, subject tests as well. Getting involved in your community, doing a lot of leadership things. Volunteer programs like Hand in Hand. Yeah, like we're, right what here. we're doing right now. There are lots of ways, and one of the biggest ways you can actually get admitted to what university you want to get into is by writing a powerful essay that really shows like your personal interests and like what you want to achieve in the future. And also, you should do background um, research into the colleges that you're applying to. Oh, look for any specific facts about like, the, the traditions on campus so you can think about putting that into your essays and make sure that you apply the correct facts, uh, background facts about the colleges to the correct one that you're sending your essay to. Yeah. How important is SAT, do you think? And I don't think that SAT is that important. It's more about what you are involved in, like what activity, activities you've done and who you know. And teacher recommendations are, really, are, are a really important factor because they actually show who you are. And I also believe that an interview is not that big of a deal. You just have to show the university who you are and what you want to accomplish in the future. And if they like that, they'll admit you into their college. Okay. Um, one thing that a lot of them are looking for is they want to see that how you can impact uh, the future rather than just. So um, if you uh, go into the interviews and in your essays, you don't want to talk exactly about how you want to secure future, but you want to say how you want to impact that and change it. And they like that more. Exactly. Thank you. I believe that the SAT is not that important. Although I did get 2380, I believe that there are other things that are more important than the SAT, such as community work and your showing the college that you're you have a passion in what you do. Okay. Um. Also, going off that, um, many colleges have also expressed interest that they don't want to see that SAT and standardized test taking become like an extracurricular activity. So, um, you don't dedicate too much time to it. And what they're only looking for is a ballpark range. Once you've hit that ballpark, um, they look more towards your other activities for how you're getting it. And um, as I was saying earlier about making an impact, um, what these colleges um, are looking for is that they want to see that you're going to be a leader in the field and industry that you want to go into, and that you might uh, make a possible t uh, changes to that that would bring like glory and fame to the college. And they're more interested in finding those kinds of people. A lot of people ask me how I got admitted into, into like universities such as Harvard and Princeton and Yale, but the thing, <laughs> why are you laughing? But the thing is, I really don't know because that's up to the admissions board. I have not won any big awards, and I really didn't do national things in my past. But one thing that I think that will help everyone is. If they find their passion and they write about it or they show it through their admissions process or something like that. Or if they have a really, really, really good interview and like the interviewer loves them, that can always help. But to be honest with you, we are not admissions officers, so we don't have a concrete, like, step-by-step -step way to get accepted to college. And I do understand that all of you guys are probably going to take the SAT next week, or some of you. And Jesse has some things to say. Okay. Um... Going into the last week, it would be really helpful to go through a review book, um, possibly a Barron's print review or a College Board Blue Book. But um, one thing you should uh, look out for is on the last night of studying, you definitely want um, to not cram anymore. So once you've studied enough, maybe look over a few more vocab cards, um, to get a good night's rest in the morning, uh, maybe get a uh, caffeine, tea, coffee, and then make sure you're there early with your photo ID uh, ready to take the test. Um, Going there confident but not overly confident. You have to know that you know the material. Mm -hmm. that's and that's about it. For me, uh, my parents actually pushed me as a child, but not that much. After they knew that I was just motivated, they didn't really tell me to do much. So you, all you have to do is stay motivated while you do things. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, if your parents, they take uh, a really uh, closed hand in um, shaping your admission process, uh, you should take care to listen to advice at least if they have like recommendation for career opportunities like I'm sure many of you their parents your parents are pushing you to be a doctors um, you should keep that um, consideration open 
among others, and um, you shouldn't feel pressured if they're. Uh, <laughs> you shouldn't feel pressured if. Um, about tutoring companies and things of that nature. I believe that they are a good motivation for your child or for the children that are trying to apply to college and trying to get good grades in class. But I don't think it's like a key factor. The only thing that's important should be the child's motivation. If they have motivation, then they don't need a tutoring class or teachers every single second to help them with whatever they need. They just need to be motivated in what they do. Okay, also, um, I know many parents out there are looking forward or they feel pressure that they must micromanage. Um, every aspect of their child's high school career and possibly their college applications. Um, I feel it's important that the student uh, take care to listen to the advice for what they might say about career recommendations or uh, strategies and tips that they've heard from other people. But um, I also feel that it's not um, exactly beneficial if you micromanage every single um, aspect of it. You should have the child uh, exercise their own creativity and their own drive to see how far they can get on their own. Uh, okay. Hi, I'm Boyong. I'm graduating from North Korea this year, senior, and I'm going to UPenn next year. What I think about college admissions is that um, in high school, you shouldn't, you shouldn't just put all these things on your list of things to do, extracurriculars, just because you want to prepare for college to get into a good college. Um, if you want, if you're going to do something, make sure that you actually want to do it, because that way, um, that way you'll be more motivated. And then maybe later on you'll have a leadership position because I think that's what colleges are actually looking for. What sets people apart is something special about them. Maybe you've done a big community service project or you help people out in some way. And when you're writing your essay, don't be afraid to, to brag a little about yourself because that's, I mean, they don't know anything about you because they don't see you and they don't meet you. So the only thing they, they know about you is through your essay and like your numbers. And numbers usually don't say that much about a person. Uh, and also, so f about focusing on specific extracurriculars, um, so you find something you're really passionate about, don't be afraid to pursue it with, or dedicate all your time to pursuing that, or most of it, because uh, colleges, uh, like uh, Boyan said, um, they want to see someone who excels in that extracurricular, or like maybe places at state or nationals, and that looks really good on your application. Right, and if you're into it, you should, Focus on the sciences if you're into the sciences, on the humanities if you're into that. Um, if you're really interested in science, I think it would be better to apply for that field when you're applying to college as opposed to just going undecided. Because what the colleges see is that you've taken all these science courses and that you're obviously really, like, either you're, you're just taking them because you're being pushed to take them or you have an interest in the sciences. And so, I think it's a lot better if you show that interest by applying to that major. Uh, as for other things, a lot of college application is just luck, and I mean, it doesn't really matter where you go as long as you do well and you know have a good future. Uh, so about standardized testing, um, well, okay. So I got a full score on my SAT, and then my parents didn't really do anything like beforehand. They didn't actively push me to prepare, or they didn't send me to a single class. So I don't know how much SAT classes help. I just, I mean, practice is always good, but you shouldn't focus too much on that test because it's not worth that much in the big picture. Because if all your test grades are fine and they're looking at your GPA and that's okay, and your SAT score is like lacking like a few points, like 50 points, it's not gonna be that much of a blow or it might not even matter at all. Um, so I don't think you can focus too much on one thing in your college application because, you know, colleges look for well-rounded people and all of that. Okay, um, I am a rising senior right now, so next year I'll be applying for college and it's always a good thing to start getting a head start for planning about what you're going to do at each step. Um, over the summer you can look at, uh, specifically plan out the colleges that you want to apply to, consider looking into them. Um, in depth, visiting on campus or visiting the website, looking for background information about their traditions and customs, so you have 
some information you can put into your essay. Another thing is you should definitely uh, make, make a calendar of everything, uh, due dates, when they um, start and calculate costs so that you have everything planned out. For when you're applying, you don't have to worry about that. You just have to worry about when you need to get your essay and your application in. Um, also on the subject of recommendation letters, you should definitely find teachers who have known you for preferably more than one year. So you, unless you know your senior teachers really well, uh, asking them for a recommendation only three weeks or a month into the program might not be the best idea. Uh, you can consider also finding uh, to the teachers who sponsor your clubs, if you have a leadership role in there, that might look good. Or, and also some teachers that you might have had for many years will be your foreign language teacher, because you might have had the same ones since the beginning of freshman year, and they might know you a lot. Um, and if they, you think that they think you're a good character, that might be really beneficial. Um, you should definitely ask your teacher early, before everyone else asks in the first month of school. So it might be a good idea to ask them say the semester before you start applying, or finding them the first week of school as soon as possible? Um, I think it's important to find teachers that have a lot of experience with college, because that way their recommendations will be like more thought out, because they've done it so many times. And you brought something up. What was it? Oh yeah, definitely go visit the colleges. And in your essay, talk about your interest, because colleges like knowing that you're actually interested in the college, as opposed to just their like college ranking, because that's just a number, and they want to know that you'll go there if, you, if you're accepted. So. And um, one aspect a lot of people to, um, you talk, talk to, they'll mention that these colleges are looking to maintain their college uh, traditions clubs, so um, if you go there, you want, they want to see what you can contribute to the community and not just the academics. So if you can say that um, you can be like, you're going to be good with music or art or drama, and you can contribute to those programs, that looks a lot better than someone who's saying that I'm just going there to study for myself. Um, hi, I'm Brittany Liebenau, and I just graduated from Johns Creek High School. I was admitted to um, Harvard, Princeton, the combined uh, Jefferson Medical College and Penn State uh, BSMD program. I got several scholarships, um, including the Presidential Scholarship for UGA. And of these, I chose um, to attend Harvard in the fall. And um, I think that throughout high school, what I really focused on the most was academics through the school, because my priorities were always academics first, because when you think about applying to these colleges, the most important thing will always be academics, because in order to just make it from a bigger pile into a smaller pile that they consider, you have to have the academics and a fairly good SAT score. Um, but from there, they also look for for someone being like well-rounded versus just having academics and um, when they look for well-rounded they don't just mean a lot of activities because everyone can have a lot of activities so um, I would say when I mean well-rounded like I'm a national fencer and I also am I'm really good at the flute and the piccolo and I have things like I have things to back that up you know I have like competitions and like places and a lot of leadership roles and I coached at my fencing club and I was the team captain um, and then on top of those, you know, I started a club and I was part of National Honor Society Beta Club. So everything, not just I'm a member of a bunch of clubs because that's not really well-rounded. That's just sort of one thing. And um, I also graduated uh, first in my class, valedictorian, which I feel like helped a lot. Um, but I would focus on you need the high SAT score and high um, uh, grade point average just to be admitted. It's sort of like the price of admission. But then after that, there's a bunch of people in like the country and, and really in the world that have those things. So after that, look at like diversifying your portfolio. And that's the advice that I would give. Okay, um, some more, I guess, specifics about everything that I had just said. Um, extracurricular wise, I know a lot of people sort of tend to do the same extracurriculars like piano and debate and dance and if you if you do those and you're really passionate about them and you can somehow make that show through on your application or you just happen to be really really good at them and you like rank nationally then those are fine but there are a lot of people competing in those things so unless you have something something about that activity that makes you unique that that activity will be hard to like because the point of the application is to make you stand out from everyone else so if a bunch of people have the same like piano extracurricular then it's going to it's going to make it a little bit harder for you to stand out but if you have sort of something that makes you unique in that area then that's totally fine um but i would say like 
a lot of the things that people don't think to try, like around here, people don't think to try fencing. So for me, fencing was like a good option. But um, nationally, keep in mind that like what a lot of people don't try around here is not necessarily what people don't try nationally. Like around here, it's a little more uncommon for rowing and fencing, but for the Ivy Leagues, rowing and fencing, like it's very like, they, they like things like that. And nationally, it's respectable. They're more of like the Ivy League sports. So if you look at, if you look at the things that the Ivy Leagues like, not just like what's popular around here, because I mean, you're trying to please that me. Like, you're not trying to please everyone around here, you know? Like, your parents aren't going to admit you <laughs> into college. And so um, I would just think about, like, looking at that. But then um, I would say one thing I think I saw a lot of my friends do that I didn't necessarily do is, you, yes, you want to prepare for your SATs, and, like, yes, you need a high score, but you don't need a perfect score. And as long as you have, like, really high um, academics and, like, really good extracurriculars, your SAT score just needs to be high. It doesn't have to be perfect. And like the hours upon hours upon hours you put into that, you might want to reconsider putting so much time into that. Maybe put it into a little more extracurricular. If you have the time to study like so much for the SAT, then that's fine. I mean, a good score can't hurt you. But I would just, everything is more about like diversity and being a really, really good applicant overall. So yeah. Um, for an example of what I was sort of saying about diversifying the, my portfolio, um, Keep in mind that no matter where you go to school, you're going to be competing with other students nationally. So just because you can move to an area with less competition doesn't mean you are actually moving to an area with less competition. I competed to get into Harvard and to get into Princeton with the same people. Like people applied from Northview and people applied from Johns Creek. So you're still competing against those people. Um, so you're like in a, in a way you're not going to be able to escape high competition but one thing that the reason why I moved to Johns Creek and people will say oh well isn't it because there's less competition the reason why I moved over was because at Northview everybody does the same exact activities and I sort of felt like the atmosphere was really stifling and I was sort of being forced to become like a certain applicant so I wanted to move to Johns Creek to have more of like an open I guess malleable atmosphere so I could pick my extracurriculars and so I could sort of explore you know things that I was good at which which really worked out for me in the end because I, I had a bunch of things that like I enjoyed and it, it came through in my application that I was really dedicated to a bunch of different things and it just sort of it made me a different applicant which is why I moved over. Um, on SAT and um, ACT and AP classes, I'm a very intrinsically motivated person, which means that I can just sit down with an SAT book or an AP exam book and force myself to study for long periods of time. And I know that everybody isn't always that way. So if you are a person who can really make yourself do the right amount of studying that you know you need, then, then all you really need is an SAT, ACT, or an AP exam review book. But if you're one of those people who like, you may be a very intelligent person, you just don't necessarily have the drive to force yourself to study, then an SAT class or um, maybe a tutor could be a good option for you to look at. Um, I know that looking back on it, like I have a little sister and she might not necessarily be as like just determined as I am. So I think we're probably going to get her into like a little bit of SAT classes. But it just because you spend money on a class doesn't mean it's going to work. Because the part of the class that helps it work is the fact that you actually do have to study. Like you have to study. You can't just throw a bunch of money on top of something and expect it to work. Um, also, um... What was that other thing? <laughs> it was um, about interviews. Most of the interviews for um, especially Ivy League schools are alumni interviews, unless you do a campus visit, in which they'll they'll be about weighted the same. The colleges say that an, an interview is, is weighted about the same as a teacher recommendation, which isn't really weighted very much. <laughs> so, it, but it's still important to do well in every aspect of the application because you know you want that edge. I I'm sort of good at interviewing. It might not appear that way on this video, but um, the interview setting doesn't really scare me. So I just sort of looked over common interview questions like, you know, what's your best, um, the best aspect of yourself or like, you know, your greatest weakness and those types of things. And they don't really ask you anything that's really very strange. I think most of those questions are left for actual interviews, like job interviews and such. Because um, especially for the Ivy League schools, the alumni interviews, they just sort of 
they almost have a conversation with you about who you are as a person. So don't think that you need to be like some specific type of thing. If you show that you have a personality and like the things about you that aren't on your application or what they're looking for. So like really your personality and stuff like that. I did look over questions, but I didn't I didn't try to strategize too much because there's not very much strategizing you can do. Um, on visiting to the campuses, I actually did no visits at all because my dad didn't really see the point in visiting colleges that I may or may not even get accepted to. Um, I just sort of knew where I wanted to apply and then I applied to those schools. Um, I have friends who applied or who visited a bunch of campuses and never even ended up applying to half of them. So I mean, I feel like if you have the money and you really want to go, then there's nothing wrong with it. I just, there's not really like, if you can't do, make those visits, it's not a problem. So yeah. As far as recommendation letters, like I said before, um, they're weighted about the same as interviews and they aren't weighted as heavily as I think you would you would think they're weighted. Um, most colleges will ask you to submit one, um, if, you, if they have two or three requirements, they'll ask one from each subject area. So you can't have like two language arts, you need a language arts and a math or a science and a math, something like that. And I would just say, um, look for teachers that really, really liked you in particularly, not necessarily teachers who everybody likes, but teachers who really, really liked you, especially if they're sort of teachers that don't really like a lot of other people because then you're probably going to be the only one with that recommendation. So just sort of teachers that can actually say something personally about you would be what I would look for. Um, for my extracurricular, my main extracurricular was fencing, and I had figure skated for five years um, previous to fencing. I actually started fencing in my sophomore year, and that was sort of a weird change because I was still at Northview, you know, and everyone around me had been doing their extracurricular since they've been like really small, and um, even on the national level, most people who are fencing had been fencing since they were like four years old, but I was, I was really just done with figure skating, and I decided, you know, I really like fencing, like I really love it, I enjoy it, so I'm going to switch over whether I'm good at it or not. And um, I switched over and I ended up being good at it. <laughs> like I won the state championship my first year of fencing um, and then I won it after that too. So I've, I'm state championship for like the past two years. And then on top of that, um, I went to nationals and at my first national competition, I got national points. And um, for under 17, I was ranked about 32nd over in the entire nation. And then under 20, I was ranked um, 50 something, I think. And then this past summer, not, not the summer, but the summer before my senior year, I went to nationals and I competed in a level that was pretty much about college level and I got 24th. So um, I, that, that just sort of worked for me because I had all of the athletic background and I had the flexibility and such and then I switched over to fencing so that worked for me but that's really abnormal. Most people can't just make that switch. But um, I would say don't just stick to an extracurricular just because you've been doing it forever. Um, if you see something that you really think you're going to like then make the switch because I think it'll be worth it.